Hello, good afternoon. It's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets for end of day session, Thursday, the 18th of August. Please be sure to visit Trade Signal, signals and market updates from leading providers. Uh, you can uh, certainly download the app from the Google Play and the Apple App Store, which is www.tradesignal.com. Okay, now in terms of uh, market reaction, let's look at the uh, the closing uh, data. Uh, let's see where the markets actually closed. Uh, as we already know, Asian markets were down overnight. The uh, European markets basically shrugged off the uh, weakness in uh, Asia to a large extent. Okay, uh, the FTSE up by uh, nine points, the DAX up by 65, and the CAC up by 20 points. So certainly impressive, certainly a very impressive move to say the least. Okay, so certainly, certainly shaking off the weakness now. Um, I'm very surprised at European strength, even with the uh, likes of, uh, uh, even with the likes of, even with the likes of the uh, Euro USD certainly moving higher, which is very surprising. Okay, given the fact that the Euro USD certainly has moved higher, with the Euro moving higher, I'd expect the uh, European ex uh, European equity certainly to be under immense pressure, and that wasn't the case, unfortunately. So. Impressive, okay, impressive to say the least. So, again, that certainly is um, some strength that you have to respect. With a stronger euro, uh, the European equity is still uh, remaining afloat. Very impressive, okay. One thing has to give, either we are going to see um, a, a, an impressive rally or this, uh, this market will capitulate. Now, my bias certainly is on capitulation given the stronger euro hurting exports, but this market certainly isn't biting at present, okay. You also had the uh, Japanese exports down as well, quite substantially. You had the USD JPY down uh, as well, hitting the 100 level. And again, the markets are unfazed, the equity markets are unfazed due to QE, obviously. You had the Shanghai down as well. You had the Nikkei down almost 1.5% overnight, down 250, 260 odd points. And yet, this market, European markets certainly ignore that altogether. Uh, we, in terms of the UK, we had stronger uh, retail sales, again, negating the need for QE. So everybody is now questioning the uh, the actual uh, BOE's ability to uh, uh, forecast and uh, potentially uh, uh, guide the markets in terms of the uh, the actual economy itself. Now let's bring up the uh, chart of sterling. I mean, this in and of itself, if we bring up the chart of sterling, you'll see that this is is this is a, po a powerful argument for the FTSE 100 to be to be moving south. Now if I just bring up the chart for you, bear with me. I do have it here somewhere. Oh, here we go. Okay, so Euro uh, GBP USD daily chart. You can see clearly a double bottom formation. Okay, so given the fact that we have an unfilled gap there on above on the daily chart, you can certainly see that we have stabilized. Okay, so again, markets are not anticipating any further QE from the BOE, given the fact that we've already had a potential rate cut and increase in QE, and and I think that should be uh, that should be sufficient. Bear with me. Okay, so again, looking at a potential double bottom scenario on sterling, which in turn obviously indicates weakness on the FTSE 100. Now, in terms of other economic data uh, for, for the European um, equities, you had current accounts certainly coming in slightly stronger than expected. Uh, you had uh, CPI data coming in worse than expected. Minus 0.6 on a month-on-month -month basis in July. Um, CPI year-on-year, -year. construction, output, ECB minutes really wasn't anything of a real game-changer. Jobless claims coming in slightly weaker. Continuous jobless claims coming in slightly stronger. So again, mixed data there. Philadelphia Fed data coming in in line. CB leading, basic leading indicators coming in slightly stronger side. FOMC, Mr. Williams speech is out in the next two hours or so. So again, that will be interesting to see which way he actually shifts. Now, there was another member, Fed member, that actually shifted towards the uh, the hawkish side. So again, that is something of concern. So from my perspective, really, hmm, overall net-net buy should be bearish given the fact that the Euro USD obviously is in uh, lofty heights at 1.13. Okay, so... Again, indicating a risk off or risk aversion from there. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, now in terms of equity markets, let's see exactly where we're positioned. Okay, let's bring up the daily chart first and foremost. So daily chart of the German DAX. Now daily chart is an inside bar. You clearly see the doji candle holding this diagonal trend line. 
Now, I'm not actually expecting this diagonal trend line to hold anymore, folks, okay? I'm actually expecting this gap fill to close below at 10.360, given the fact that we have a stronger euro, okay? So I'm certainly expecting a potential bear flag scenario here. And then obviously market getting crushed down to the um, gap fill level, okay? And the stronger euro certainly is a catalyst to do so, okay? 60 minute chart. You still, you are still in the concept of lower lows and lower highs. Okay, yes, we've bounced off the low, but we are still in that period of lower lows and lower highs. So again, we need to respect that. Okay, so let us draw my diagonal trend line. You can see that we're in that uh, diagonal lower lows, lower highs phase, and looking for this uh, potential gap fill below on the back of obviously a stronger euro. Okay, so certainly uh, keep bear that in mind. Okay, in terms of the next potential move. The 10 minute chart, the German DAX, let's just look at this folks, okay, uh, again you're back at this, so revisiting this key resistance up here, okay, your resistance here, uh, we bounced off gap fill very impressively, okay, you had a nice, almost what, 50 to 60 point rally on the back of a, a stronger NASDAQ, okay, certainly triggering that, okay, so again, looking at this market from a uh, technical perspective, let's move on to the French CAC now, Let's go to the daily chart, the French CAC, okay, so again, bouncing off 200 MA, bouncing off this diagonal trend line. Again, I don't think this trend line is going to hold, my own personal opinion. I'm expecting this to crack on the back of a stronger euro, okay. 60 minute chart, yes, we are still in that downtrend, lower lows, lower highs, yes, we bounce off 200 MA. On the back of stronger, obviously, employment data, and all oil prices reaching uh, a lofty heights of 48 plus. Okay, so again, certainly bouncing, but you are still looking at a potential lower high. Okay, so previous support equals resistance as well. Looking for further weakness. French CAC on the 10 minute. Okay, so resistance is seen at 4440 zone, so watch out for 4440. Uh, impressive thrust here so thus far. Okay, in terms of the FTSE 100. Uh, let's just bring up this chart for you, looking at the daily chart first and foremost. Again, hasn't reacted to a stronger oil price. Uh, certainly concerns about further QE, okay, so dominating. So looking for weakness on the daily chart. You are looking at, on the daily chart, the real next support on the daily chart basis, you are looking at support down at 6.780, okay. 60-minute chart of the FTSE, you are looking at a potential, I mean, you certainly have held a support down here. Certainly has held, okay, certainly has held this support around the uh, 6850. And then now you are looking for that potential support to breach, okay. And uh, therefore, once it's breached, you are looking at the next potential support at 6820. And then you're looking at uh, 6780 on the downside, okay. So that's my uh, uh, certainly uh, forecast onto the FTSE 100. Again, if oil prices do, given the fact that oil price is the wild card, so if oil prices do continue to move higher, then that certainly is a game changer altogether. So bear that in mind, okay. Again, that base has to crack at 6.850 to, to actually get a real concerted move uh, uh, higher, okay, on the FTSE 100, so bear that in mind, okay. Uh, again, looking at resistance in the FTSE at 6.890 zone, okay, uh, and again, oil prices need to be observed because the FTSE is very sensitive to oil, okay. Euro stocks, let's just quickly look at Euro stocks for you now before we finish, here we go. Uh, Euro stocks, again, looking at a potential base being built here around the 2.980 zone. That certainly needs to be respected okay folks we are now on the verge of breaking out this diagonal trend line you haven't closed the gap at uh, 2973 which is quite surprising i'd expect that gap to close but for now still lower lows lower highs although we have made a potential double bottom so again need to work off that double bottom if the double bottom holds at uh, 2980 then uh, you are looking at a move higher if that fails then obviously we start to move lower again Okay, so again, watch out for that zone. You do have resistance at 3,000, okay? But having said that, folks, remember, the euro is the most important factor, okay? Get the euro at the 1.13 zone, that certainly isn't looking good for equities, okay? Especially European equities, as it hurts exports, okay? So again, looking at potential risk or scenario for European equities. Let's look at the price of oil. Let's see exactly where oil prices are trading now. Oil price certainly has uh, moved higher, even though we have potential doubt of these. I mean, we had news this morning of Saudi Arabia increasing their oil production as well. So again, casting doubt in any potential uh, production freeze. So oil prices certainly have been impressive, rallied from 39 to 48, now almost $10. Very, very impressive. Okay, it's been non-stop. Uh, and again, uh, ideal resistance. I did expect a resistance to hold at 47. That hasn't been the case, okay? We've certainly ripped through that potential resistance in the back of perceived uh, hawkish or should we say dovish tone from the uh, fed uh, yesterday okay so for now 
circumspect okay circumspect i can't really on the daily chart there's no real overt resistance on okay uh, yes you do have resistance on the four hour chart the next potential resistance seen at 48 dollars or should we say 40 48.8 sorry 48.8 is a key resistance next on the price of oil so watch out 48.8 uh, you did have resistance down here 47.6 that has failed to uh, to actually hold okay so again looking for weakness here okay in terms of the price of oil okay so i think that's a summation in terms of the um, european markets uh, again watch out for sterling watch out for oil in terms of FTSE, and certainly uh, indicating weakness if all starts to reverse okay folks on that note i'm going to um, call it a day uh, please be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs certainly a good week this week plus 213 points on a live analysis service certainly changes the fortunes of the last two weeks which have been negative so that's good news okay and uh, again it's not just a straight volume flow up environment it's it's equal opportunities the bulls and bears both making money okay on that note please be sure to visit cfds.com and take advantage of that 25 percent bonus Goodbye.